if I could, if I could now introduce the next speakers. Um, Lisa, from who, you, who you're already aware of, uh, our CEO, uh, NBN Trust. Hello, uh, Lisa, again. And Ellen Wilson, co-chair of uh, the Scottish Biodiversity Information Forum. And uh, Ellen and Lisa are going to talk about Scotland's uh, Better Biodiversity Data Project. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all for having us uh, along today. Um, so my name is Ellen Wilson, and um, many of you may know me from my day job with RSPB, where um, I'm head of conservation data, which gives me lots of insight and interest in the theme of this conference today. But perhaps more of you will know me as one of the co-chairs of ESPIB, actually, um, the Scottish Biodiversity Information Forum, along with Jill Douse from the Scottish Wildlife Trust. So it's a real pleasure to be here today um, to both update you on recent progress following publication of the ESPIB review a couple of years ago, and to introduce you to a new partnership project getting underway in Scotland as we take steps towards implementing the recommendations of the review. Um, I'm delighted to be sharing the presentation today with Lisa Chilton. Um, and so uh, just in terms of how we're going to break up uh, the, the talk, um, I'm going to take you through a little bit of history before sharing the vision for the project and its aims and objectives. And Lisa will then describe the approach and role of the NBN Trust before explaining more about the project partners, timeline and benefits and um, getting things underway. Um, well, I'm sure that actually many people in the room will be too young to realise that the momentum around ESPIF actually started a really long time ago. Um, long before even I was born, um, the biodiversity community have been facing very similar problems to those that we face today. And we've been talking actually a lot around it today. Um, lots of reports and reviews were undertaken and these informed a public petition back in 2009, um, which led to the Scottish Government recommending that ESPIF itself be established. So Craig McAdam, who'd been instrumental in the petition, amongst others, um, became its first chair. And I then took over in 2016 and I undertook the, um, the SBIF review with a series of cross-sectoral workshops to understand the changes and commitments needed uh, to transform the biological recording infrastructure in Scotland. Well, we managed to publish our findings in um, late 2018. Um, and then sought major public funding. Um, we had a really ambitious plan um, put together that alas has proved too expensive to fund solely through the public purse um, as governments have been struggling sort of you know the ABC of austerity, Brexit and Covid. So during lockdown we regrouped to take forward a revised proposal that we hoped our funders would see as an affordable and integral part of Scottish Government's Scottish biodiversity strategy. And so um, the Better Biodiversity Data Project was born. Um, in terms of our vision for the project, well, it's to keep Scottish biodiversity data secure and accessible in perpetuity through ensuring that our LERC network can both curate the data effectively and develop efficient added value services for all of Scotland to enable biodiversity data to be used at the heart of decision making. So that's a, a good, um, good vision to have. Um, in terms of the actual aims and objectives of the project, well, we'll be having an initial development phase, an engagement phase to really work out um, exactly how we uh, deliver each of the five objectives that we have. Um, the, the five objectives um, are, uh, first of all, establishing a national hub for Scotland that can act as a coordinating body on behalf of all of our LERCs, recording groups and other um, stakeholders. And this should make a huge difference to our capacity and capability in Scotland um, as it will provide a dedicated team to support our LERCs and our recording groups. Secondly, we want to establish a new single framework agreement with Nature Scott to clarify, secure and streamline funding arrangements. And thirdly, we want to establish a single shared data management system with all the um, analysis of requirements, the procurement, the data migration and system integration that that will entail. Uh, fourthly, we want to streamline core data flows to facilitate easy real time sharing through central data agreements with key data partners. And finally, we want to establish at least one core income generating added value service that will help finance the infrastructure in Scotland in perpetuity while meeting the needs of the people actually wanting the service that we put in place. OK, well, that's an overview of the project itself in a nutshell. So I'll now hand over to um, Lisa to um, tell you a bit more about our approach and timeline and so on. Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, I'm not able to take control of the slides, so would you mind doing the honours for me and moving to my slide? Perfect. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I want to thank Ellen and the SBIF Working Group and SBIF Advisory Group for all the work that has gone into this really exciting project. The NBN Trust is really excited to be at the point we are now of being almost ready to launch and take on the delivery of the project. We're just waiting on a couple of final issues to be resolved. So firstly, 
for the full funding to be confirmed and we're very nearly there and secondly for our board of trustees at the NBN Trust to formally approve that the trust takes on responsibility for this project. So what does that look like? What's our actual role in relation to this project? Well, first of all, it is taking responsibility overall for the leadership and governance of the project. Now, when I uh, started in post in April, um, my meeting with the SPF working group was one of my very first meetings. And at that stage, what was being spoken about was the NBN Trust hosting the project. But the more that I um, and colleagues and our board got into this, the more we thought actually this aligns so well with our strategy, with our direction of travel. We don't just want to host it. That sounds quite passive. We want to be the ones taking this project forward. And we believe that there is a future for the NBN Trust to be um, taking on this role, not just for the two year duration of the project, but over a much longer time scale to be providing that support and central hub for Scotland. So we're taking on leadership, we're taking on governance of the project, our board will be establishing a dedicated subcommittee which will have oversight of the project and um, the SBIF co-chairs and representatives of the key project funders will be invited to join that committee so that there's that really high level involvement of the project partners. We'll also be responsible for managing project delivery. This is a big project. We're talking about half a million pound project to start to transform the biodiversity data infrastructure and relationships in Scotland. And we will be managing all the project management side of things you'd expect. So managing the risks, the budget, um, we'll be employing the project staff. So there'll be five new posts created to deliver the project starting with a national coordinator, um, but then also supplemented by more technical posts, posts dealing with the consortium side of things, posts dealing with the data management tool. So there'll be five new posts created at the NBN Trust, which is incredibly exciting. Another key responsibility will be engaging project partners and stakeholders in the planning and delivery. This is a partnership project. It will only work, it will only succeed if it is done in a really collaborative way. And whilst the NBN Trust will be holding the reins, we're very much seeing this as a project based on consensus as far as possible. And we will be, we will be building instructors to ensure that that can take place. And then finally, obviously, with our position, we will be wanting to make sure that any new software tool developed through this um, dovetails completely smoothly with the NBN Atlas and with iRecord. So that's our role in relation to the project. Thank you, Ellen. Looking at project partners and funders. So our expectation, as I said, soon to be confirmed, is that the project will be fully funded between Nature Scott and the Scottish Government. The project will be delivered, though, as I said, as a collaborative venture and all of the Scottish lurks and recording groups will be core partners within the project, along with SBIF itself, along with BRISC, Biological Recording in Scotland, and a wide number of other stakeholders as well. And there will be a project steering group that provides representation for all of the different stakeholders within the project. Ellen, next slide, please. In terms of the timeline, this is provisional because it depends on when we finally get that green light. Um, but we're expecting it to be before the end of the calendar year, um, or if not, then early in 2022, which will then mean that we can move quickly to recruit the project team, starting with the national coordinator role, as I said, but then with the four other posts staggered over the course of the project. And in parallel with that, we will start to work with partners and stakeholders to identify and agree the requirements, because although a great deal of preparation has already been undertaken for this project, there's still a lot of detail to be fleshed out. You know, what what does this database need to look like um, and how is this consortium going to function in a practical level? How will money move around once the project starts being able to bring in revenues for commercial data services? 
So once we've secured agreement on the different options going forward, it'll be then down to the team working with stakeholders to develop and implement the solutions and of course to monitor, evaluate and plan. This is just a two year project. It's going to fly by. Um, there are some areas in particular that are still going to be pretty developmental at the stage that the project winds up and we're looking for the long term. We're looking to the future. So monitoring and evaluation will be key. Next slide, please, Ellen. And um, so I'm going to put a few words in, into the mouths of Nature Scott and Scottish Government as key funders here. This was a slide that was provided by Nature Scott. But the key, some of the key areas of value, and I'm not going to read them all, in terms of Nature Scott and the Scottish Government, are first of all that they see this project as being an important contribution to green recovery, to the Scottish National Party and the Greens programme for government, and to the national planning framework and a key component of delivering the reporting requirements for the Scottish biodiversity strategy. Also enhancing Nature Scott and the Scottish Government's reputation as being evidence-based organisations and a global leader in biodiversity, um, as well as providing access to a suite of key indicator species data sets. But really importantly, one of the things that this project will deliver is increasing the resilience of data holdings and strengthening the local record system in Scotland. Because at the moment there are significant gaps and weaknesses as a result of historical resourcing and, and um, changes. And there are real risks to the sustainability and to the existence of some of the data holdings across Scotland. So this project will help to support that um, as well as a number of other benefits. Next slide, please, Ellen. Two, two minutes, Lisa and Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm almost done. So looking at the benefits for the lurks and the recording groups, on the other hand, well, clearly the big one is enhancing the impact of the data that the lurks and recording groups hold. That's what this is all about, as we've heard so many times today. But also there's potential for greater recognition of the lurks and the recording groups at the strategic level, including in the Scottish Government. There will be a new data management system. There will be income from national level data services, which will hopefully support a more sustainable operating model for the LERCs and recording groups. There will be oversight and access to training, support and development through the hub, continuity in data management, and hopefully, all things going well, access to funding for future projects as well. So we see this as being a project with, for and by the LERCs and recording groups who are very much core partners. Next slide. So finally, then, next steps. We hope to be able to confirm and launch the project very soon, um, probably early in the new year. Next steps will be to recruit the project team. So if you know anyone who's looking for a new opportunity, we think this will be a really exciting project to be involved in and transformational for the way that data is shared and managed in Scotland. We will also soon be setting up the partner and stakeholder engagement opportunities and will be really keen to involve as many people as possible to make sure that what the project produces and provides absolutely meets the needs of um, those who are at the cold face in Scotland. So um, please do get in touch with me if you have any further information. Um, and thank you again to everyone for getting the project to this stage. It's extremely exciting and we just can't wait to get our teeth stuck, stuck into it and start delivering. Thank you very much, um, Lisa and Ellen. A um, couple of questions have come in. Let me just check. Um, Uh, I'm new to the biodiversity field. Is most of the data used to inform policy decisions created by citizen science or is there a, oh, this must be from the last one. Um, uh, no, I think those are from the last one. Does anybody have questions specific to, before we sort of wrap up? Uh, there, there are some questions in the, um, yeah, am I right to read them out to you? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, what, what is the thinking about what building a data management system actually means? What is to be created and for whom? The timeline is very short to do both fact finding and implementation. And just um, 
a slight side add to that. What does the word hub mean for this project? Are we thinking physical or virtual? Do you want to go first, Helen? So uh, quite a lot to the system side of things and absolutely well observed that it's, there's quite a lot to do in a two year period. Um, it's getting it underway. So it's beginning to really define um, the requirements of the system, which I won't prejudge. Um, there's lots of requirements um, out there, um, but it's about getting in place the right um, tools and interconnections with other platforms um, for, for the core um, players to, to use, um, primarily the lurks and the recording groups, um, but it could be you know, more useful than, than that to, to, to further stakeholders. Um, in terms of the hub, um, I doubt it'll be building a building and putting in the minute. Um, it'll be a virtual, you know, hosted by MBN, sorry, owned and hosted, I should say, um, by MBN. So the, the option to be based anywhere, really, depending on, on the role um, concerned. I'll just pick up another question, which is about um, Scottish museums that hold natural, natural history collections with biodiversity data and whether they will be involved. And we very much hope that will be the case. OK, any more questions for Lisa? Ellen? There was one just saying, where is the local authority funding? But is that covered by the, the uh, funding you've mentioned already? Yeah, so looking at a single framework agreement, so that would look into all of those aspects um, as to how the funding is channeled and, and secured for, for the LURCs, yeah. It's envisaged that um, from perhaps the second year of the project that those funds would come through the hub, i.e. through the NBN trust um, to each of the record centres and recording groups and we'd be working with Nature Scott and with the LURCs and recording groups to work out the detail of that, as Ellen said. 